Tikosh. Uh, in terms of working, I'm not working for Business Asatini, I work for YKK Southern Africa. Most of you will know it as YKK Zipas, one of the oldest companies here in Eswatini. Uh, usually when they need experts in certain committees, they pull from their membership. So I represent them in issues of occupational health and safety. Uh, what we have noted uh, um, is that uh, we've had recent crisis uh, ongoing. Uh, everyone is talking about uh, COVID-19. And besides COVID-19, we recently in the country suffered natural disasters like tropical cyclone Eloise. And all of them have tested our response systems uh, as industry. Uh, the so economic and social disruption caused uh, by the pandemic has been devastating and has profound effects on the revenues of our membership, uh, that is uh, of companies either be it multinational enterprises, large enterprises, obviously also the SMEs were also quite affected uh, by COVID-19 such that some of uh, the enterprises face an existential threat. Inadequately protected workplaces uh, can form COVID-19 clusters. So us as employers, we had to make sure that uh, we prevent any outbreaks in our uh, settings, because if we had any outbreaks in our settings, it would have led to having to close some of our factories uh, for quite some period to enable us to be able to, uh, to enable us to be able to contain the spread of COVID-19 in our facilities. So we will note that also uh, why is, uh, OSH is important for business is because um, uh, most of the primary responsibility for occupational health and safety in terms of uh, the Occupational Health and Safety Act of 2001 is placed, the primary responsibility is placed on us as the employer. We must make sure that uh, the employment setting is uh, conducive for our employees. Uh, research also shows that health and safety and the well-being equals to good business and profitability. Uh, work, the negative effects of poor OSH management include costly early retirement, the loss of skilled staff, absenteeism, presenteeism, and high medical and insurance premiums. There are also costs resulting from uh, losses in productivity and reduced output in our settings. I've already mentioned that the Occupational Health and Safety Act of 2000, number 9 of 2001 places the primary fiduciary responsibility of ensuring that all uh, our workplaces are safe, uh, to ensure that as far as reasonably practical, the workplaces, machinery, equipment and processes under our control are safe and without risk to the health of employees. They've also made sure that we uh, have to ensure that uh, uh, we keep uh, employees informed in terms of uh, training, sharing information uh, with regards to any ongoing uh, challenges uh, like the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So usually what happens when we have crisis uh, like this, you will find that uh, m because there is decrease in public spending, when there's decrease in public spending, it means that uh, there will be reduced profits for some uh, companies. So that poses a challenge of how do you fund health and safety in a situation whereby now you have got uh, reduced revenues. So those are some of the challenges that we have had to grapple with as uh, employers, uh, whilst at the same time, in order for us to keep our doors open, to be open to business, we had to incur this unbudgeted for extra expenditure that is related to the extra PPE that was required for uh, COVID-19. So, ladies and gentlemen, you've already heard that about 30% uh, of the cases are from industrial settings. Uh, so you can see that even though the, uh, we, in, in Eswatini, we did, uh, well, as part of TCOSH, uh, we asked the Minister of Health to just run a, a scenario for us to see uh, how, m m what is the figures in terms of uh, uh, occupational health and safety, uh, exposure of employees uh, in the employment settings. 
And the, the scenario showed that about 10% of the cases were from industrial settings, uh, with 89% of them, uh, the employees had previous contact uh, before the workplace setting with an infected case, and about 11% uh, uh, were exposed at the, at the workplace. So indeed, there could be a, a exposure in the workplace, so it was very important that we follow all the public health guidelines. Uh, sometimes you will find that when we follow all the public health guidelines, in some of the workplaces it becomes uh, unworkable because you'll find that, uh, for example, if in a textile setting, you'll find that pre-COVID-19, pre uh, the working arrangement was such that you, you are close to each other because you have to move the production in a line. So now in the COVID-19 situation, you have to eliminate some lines which now your production might take longer and you might not be able to meet your commitments to customers in good time. So as employers at the enterprise level, we have followed all the COVID-19 uh, protocols as a uh, government, uh, the Ministry of Health and the World uh, Health Organization uh, of ensuring social distancing. We reviewed our policies and procedures to safeguard our businesses for the future. Uh, so we have put in place business continuity systems uh, to make sure that we, uh, in, in any other crisis, because uh, it is projected that we will have in future other uh, epidemics. So this is the time to take stock, and the lessons learned we, it will make us better prepared in the future. Uh, good safety leadership is important to communicate changes and motivate employees to comply with the changes. Uh, obviously, uh, when you uh, introduce new measures in the workplace, sometimes you'll find that there's resistance. Uh, but with time and uh, with good leadership, you find that it is easier for employees to comply. Coming into also uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has also uh, introduced us into a new way of working, what we call working from home, uh, which was not so popular before. But going forward into the future, we see that it's going to be uh, quite uh, uh, the, the normal way of working, the new normal. Uh, but obviously, that brings with it a whole host of health and safety uh, challenges for us as employers. How do we uh, manage an employee, make sure they are working in an occupationally health and safe environment in their home? So that also uh, brings us to make sure that uh, we have to try and find adequate information about the setting where the employee, uh, we have to go, uh, go uh, uh, visit their, uh, their homes to do an economic assessment because you'll find most of the time they are working on couches. Uh, they, they, they will have musculoskeletal disorders. Uh, so if an employee is injured at home, how do you handle all that? So it, it, there's a whole lot of new occupational health and safety challenges that uh, COVID-19 uh, has uh, brought uh, to the fore. But obviously, as businesses, Swatini, uh, with the help of the International Labour Organization, our, our constituents, our members, were assisted in developing a working from an employer's guide of working from home. Uh, so that employer's guide is available uh, to any other interested parties uh, who will be who want to make sure that they can regulate issues of working from home. Uh, they are also, in terms of now, uh, focusing on businesses. Swatini itself, uh, there's been actively mobilizing through COVID-19 through the business community. Just quickly, just to before I wrap up, to show that. Uh, Business of Swatini has made available uh, the creation of posters and pamphlets which were distributed and circulated countrywide. There were also Business of Swatini made donations in excess of 36.6 million that was channeled towards the purchase of PPE for healthcare workers, equipment for COVID-19 health centers, water tanks for public places, sanitizers donated to BE members and some government agencies and ministries. So, ladies and gentlemen, this would have not been possible. I think you have seen the contribution that PE has done uh, through the various donations. This would not have been possible 
the, without the assistance of our members, such as the Nati Cash Foundation, Swaki, Southern Star, Premier Fields, Conco, and to mention uh, uh, but a few. And note that the, if I haven't mentioned the, the stakeholder, they are not important. Uh, on, on conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, uh, on this special occasion, Business Eswatini reiterates employers' strong commitment to play their part in securing a safe and healthy working environment. Business Eswatini also encourages government and other social partners to do their part to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 in the world of work. Uh, we, must continue to we will continue to collaborate with government to shape policy measures that are conducive for business resilience, resilience and sustainability and observe guidance and advice from public authorities. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, with those uh, remarks, uh, I thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Mzuli, for 